The lines of car after car lined up for food, necessities, whatever they can get, show you that the need is great in our community for what the San Antonio Food Bank provides. And so we are very happy to have Eric Cooper, the president and CEO from the San Antonio Food Bank with us live for today's KSAT Q&A. Eric, thank you for joining us. Right off the top, you know, we, we talked, I, it was probably a couple of months ago about the need and how great it was. Has anything changed since then? Well, Steve, as we talked then, I share that we went from feeding 60,000 people a week to 120,000 people a week. And that need has stayed constant all throughout this crisis. But what looms now is a lot of uncertainty, I think, with schools postponing the, the opening and kids that would have been fed in school and then the Texas summer heat and utility bills. Uh, along with unemployment insurance running out for many families, that extra stimulus families were getting is creating that uncertainty of what tomorrow might bring. And so we're seeing some additional families at our distributions. And uh, we just hope that uh, Congress will act and put some safety net strategies in place so that this benefit cliff doesn't leave a lot of people hanging. We know the need in, in San Antonio in our community still exists. What does the food bank need? What does your organization need to meet that crucial demand? Well, there's always four things the community could share, and that's food, time, money, and voice. Food donations go a long way, uh, whether hosting a food drive or, or, you know, if you're a food company donating. Uh, the donation of time through volunteerism, we always need volunteers across the kitchens, the farm, the garden, and out at those distributions, uh, financial contributions. Again, for every dollar donated, we can put out seven meals. And then just raising our voice like you guys do to tell our story. If people will just share in social media around public policy uh, and really help those families a long way. You, you talk about volunteers. Have you seen that wane at all? I mean, obviously, you, you said the need is consistent. I'm guessing the need for volunteers is just as consistent. I mean, have you, have you seen a wane in some volunteers showing up at certain events? Yeah, we, you know, about the 4th of July, we, we saw a dip in some of the volunteers. Remember, cases are spiking, so fear is high. There was some fatigue because a lot of these volunteers, to be honest, They've been coming since March. They've been plugging into our distribution, serving. So some of that fatigue was setting in. And then I tell you, it's been hot out there. So um, this summer heat's been brutal, but we've felt some resurgence. More people are aware and more people are coming out to volunteer, but we've got lots of shifts that still need volunteers. So if you have some time on your hands, please come help us at the food bank. This pandemic has affected nearly every corner of our community. We have talked about how some people have found themselves in situations where they're reaching out for the very first time. Are you finding that with uh, the people who are coming to the food bank asking for help? This may be the very first time they found themselves in this situation. That's absolutely the case. Uh, more than half of who has been coming, it's been their first time to reach out to us. And so we want to make sure they're nourished and uh, we do have distributions on a regular basis, so if they're unemployed and without income, you know, we can continue to feed them till they get back to work. Um, and for a lot of those individuals, it's, it's a senior, it's a shut-in, it's someone that doesn't have access to transportation. And so uh, they need to reach out specifically to our, our helpline, that number is 210 Four three one eight three two six. We've got volunteers and VIA that are actually helping us deliver those food boxes. Thousands of food boxes each month go to those homebound seniors. So if you're in need, please reach out. We want to make sure you and your family are nourished. And that's that's the big thing I wanted to also get across because there are people who maybe know somebody who's afraid to reach out for help, who's afraid to maybe admit that they need help in the middle of this crisis. And, and we've got the website up right now, safoodbank.org slash help. And the phone number that you just gave again, 210-431-8326, is that correct? That's correct, yeah. What, what's your I message see. to somebody who, who, who just doesn't wanna swallow their pride and come and get a food distribution? Well, number one, we love you, right? And uh, we're all going through this crisis together. And it's such a privilege for us to be able to serve someone in need and our volunteers being there to spread some hope, um, to, to give some nourishment. 
is an opportunity for them just as much as it is for someone that might be struggling to put food on their table. Um, but it is the community that comes together. It's why San Antonio is such an amazing city. And I'm seeing it. I'm seeing people in their finest hour when they're giving, they're sharing, they're caring, and needs are being met. Eric, before we go, you as the president and CEO of the Food Bank, what is your biggest concern right now? What are you most worried about when you look at the need of our community? You've been on the front lines in response to those who have found themselves in just unbelievable situations. So what's your big concern? Well, great question. I mean, I think when you guys interviewed me a few months back, we were still in our sprint and I was pretty fatigued. Um, I think we've, we're kind of hitting our marathon pace, but there's a real uncertainty what mile marker we're in. Are we at the beginning or, or close to the end? And I think it's that uncertainty um, that, for me, makes me look at our inventory to say, you know, can our inventory keep up the amount of demand that's on it? Will we have enough food to make sure no one goes hungry? And then ultimately, the strengthening of the economy. We want to get families out of our parking lots and into grocery stores, right? We want families shopping. Um, and that's when they have a job, when they have their own income, when they can be self-sufficient and self-reliant. And so the uncertainty of the future creates the stress, but I know that we're not alone. Um, those that are giving and sharing and those that are in need, we're in this together. And uh, I, again, I, I know that we're going to get through it together. Eric Cooper, San Antonio Food Bank. We're running out of time here. You'll join us again on the night beat at 10. And one of the things I want to talk about are, are kids who are at home instead of at school, where school is a lot of times where they get their meals. So I want to talk to you about that tonight on the night beat. Thank you for joining us. Talk to you tonight. All right. Thanks, Steve. We'll be right back.